Why didn't you provide us with hero makeup? With makeup for everyone? Yeah. Well, everyone needs makeup, particularly when they come down from Airbus Base Camp. But yeah. I did see a woman with a complete set of false eyelashes, which is impressive, and I think next time I'll put them on the kit list. Mm. Other than breathing, I'm not having any issues. Oh, good. I prefer the breathing. Yeah. When I have a tank on me and I'm scuba diving, there's this bright breathing. Okay. So I'm wondering if the next time I could get a Sherpa to bring one of my oxygen tanks with me. I can just breathe out of those. What do you think? I think that sounds like a fabulous idea. The rest. Chomo Lung Ma. Chomo Lung Ma. Sagar Mata. The trip came about in a pretty random way. I knew Robert, the guide. I was fascinated that he actually was doing Everest guiding stuff. He probably joked to me, we should do a trip out to Everest Base Camp. Bill Anderson and I were in LA having dinner, and he mentioned it, and I said, I'd love to do it. I, came, I became aware of planning for it with, with Richard McDonald. We both kind of fell for the idea of being able to do this as a, I think is a really hard physical and mental endurance test and the ability to be able to do it with good friends. Bill Anderson is my partner and love of my life. Um, and he and Richard um, have been talking about this Everest Base Camp, you know, um, trip for a really long time. Bill, I literally asked me on my our second date if I would come and I immediately jumped at the opportunity. Bill Anderson asked me and I said instantly, instantaneously yes. So Manish Chopra, who was my classmate from business school. I thought it was, you know, the mana from heaven, right? It's like, how often do you get to be invited to your trip to Base Camp? To come to visit this area. This trip started, I worked with Richard McDonald five or six years ago. He found out about my Everest adventures and my links to New Zealand and pretty soon said, you know, I'd really like to go to Everest one day, Robert. My dad wanted to show it to me and I very much wanted to see it and appreciate it and know it myself. I went to school with Richard McDonald. Rich and I used to do yep. used to do a lot of surfing together. But there was something about Bill the first time I met him that I think I just felt a kindred spirit. He was going to go on this trip of a lifetime uh, to Everest Base Camp. And I went, wow, that's something I always wanted to do. And he said, you should come with us. I guess we were both invited. I originally was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. You should do that. That's great. Have a great time. <laughs> I got involved in this trip through my neighbors in Northern California uh, and thought that uh, myself and my wife should accompany them on this uh, grand expedition. I am Phil's daughter. My mom called me up and said, your father really wants to go on this, but I don't think I can go. Can you go in my place? I guess that's an interesting thing about the people, right, is everybody was really vulnerable and open and honest. So everybody felt very comfortable with each other very quickly, which made the people part of it really rewarding. Our group TED Talks were a highlight. Phil wowed us with his medicine bowl, singing in the Nanshe bar and reciting Macbeth at Gorup Shed. Richie and Andy became haka instructors for a night. Amy taught us to think more deeply. Bill guided our group poem and shared his creations. Manish was going to teach us to dance, but found a naughty poem instead. Tori led the charades. Johnny sang and played to us while we warmed ourselves with yak poo. Robert taught us how to walk really slowly, how to think about the sky, the mountain, and team before ourselves. Going on this trek, you know, um, taught me two things, and I kept thinking about it the whole time. It's basically humility and gratitude. You know, I, I thought before doing this trip, you know, I was an Iron Man ran marathons and all of a sudden I found myself doing this and I'm at the back of the pack, you know. I will never forget Gorek's shoot, night after going to base camp. So we're physically tired, mentally exhausted, probably felt a little disappointed and flat because base camp's kind of boring and, you know, not a lot there. And then you end up in Gorek's shed, which is a Siberian prison. 
It was, it was a tough night. Gorg Shepard, I'm still horrified that I put my wife through that experience. But it was only a night. Yeah, I wouldn't go there again. <laughs> Zero stars, I do not recommend. Everest Base Camp is one of the most popular trekking routes in the Himalayas, with 40,000 people a year making the trek from Lukla. 500 people a day start the trek in the busy season, and the sky is busy with the helicopter highway buzzing above the route. The route is 130 kilometers or 80 miles and travels above 5,000 meters or 17,000 feet where the air has half the amount of oxygen. What first attracted me to Everest was uh, the book Into Thin Air by I think I was just looking for a big adventure. Getting to the summit was probably not the thing to aim for first first out of the gate. I was literally living in New Zealand at the time and I got a call from a friend. They were putting a team together and he said, you know, do you want to go climb on Everest? There is any climber naturally would say, I said yes. A place that's that special to him and that he's devoted a lot of his time and his work to, to get to do that with him it was really special. My husband talked about going to Mount Everest and actually climbing Mount Everest and I always sort of did the eye roll and like I'll see you when you get home. When I was in middle school um, I had written a bucket list and I'd written Everest Base Camp. The most surprising piece of gear was the pee bottle. So uh, buying an extra Nalgene water bottle to pee in in the middle of the night for a couple of nights was a very good purchase and surprisingly useful. Which I would have thought of. <laughs> so maybe even the pee bottle is my favourite gear. <laughs> this is the first time I've owned hiking gear. This is the first time I've owned hiking gear. And I don't own a pair of spandex pants. So this is kind of cool to wear these, uh, these, these pants. The morning we spent with the monks, we sat down and actually heard them pray, you know, for 45 minutes. That was pretty awesome. It was very spiritual, really nice, really meditative. My brother, you know, since we started planning for this, my brother's come down with ALS, which is a terrible disease. And I really dedicated this trip to, to him. And when we got up to Everest Base Camp, Mary and I took a picture of a, of a, you know, a sign that I had made saying that, you know, we were thinking about him at the top of the, near the top of the world. I imagine that there would be some kind of sense of a connection to a deeper sense of marvel in, in the world. It's really beautiful here and, and, and I think it's hard to explain or even on video or on photos show people um, just how one can actually feel so connected to something so massive and so beautiful. Well I've been up to base camp six times, I've been on the mountain climbing three times and so why would I come back? I think it's always the people now. To every space camp or not to every space camp, that is the question. Whether it is nobler for the beauty of the earth and people that are infinite that we remember the cave of Gorik Shep or the sites of base camp replenishing our souls. For our memories of shared meals, steps together, and smiles on the Pali Flats will continue for a lifetime. Stuck in crowds on barren hillsides, queuing over rocks and streams, the sounds of bells, rotor blades, and voices pour into immense space. All with the tranquility and silence swirling in the midst of the Himalayan sounds and the constant stony roar of the river below. It brings memories of gratitude for being in the presence of the grand, yet serene, while waking every day to the crisp, perfect blue skies. So close to the infinite, so near to the top. Humbled, grounded, small, alive. Yeah. Pushing boundaries, yeah, growing emotionally and physically as. Huh? The journey outweighs the destination and the people make it the journey. Whoa. Oh. Uh, 12 days Everest Base Camp checks. It was 100% successful. Thank you. Namaste, I am Pinja Sherpa. 
especially from Everest region, same region, same place. First day, I am Nagendra. Uh, I'm very happy now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>